Welcome to the Gamers Encyclopedia, an informative series detailing the histories of long-running or important series in gaming history. Last time, I promised you one of the most prolific series of action games of all time, and Mega Man isn't just that, it's one of the most prolific series of any genre. I've been into the Blue Bomber since a young age, and I consider many of the Mega Man games to be timeless classics that I could easily spend hours talking about. Hell, I've done it, for reals. That being said, I'm covering a large amount of games in this episode, and while I certainly don't wish to rush through this, especially since we're talking about one of my all-time favorite series, I do have to be rather concise in my analyses of each game. Because there are a shitload of them. So seriously, if you leave me any comments that start with, but what about, or you forgot, or why didn't you talk about, I'm going to berate you, and then I'm going to block you. Seriously, don't do it, or any derivative thereof. Mega Man, in Japan, is known as Rock Man, which was named after rock music. His creator, Keiji Yanafani, is a big music fan, and musical references are all over the series, though many of them are literally lost in translation. Mega Man is slightly based off of Astro Boy, a Japanese manga and anime about a robot boy. Capcom did not have the rights to make an Astro Boy video game, so they made their own original characters. And while you can see the similarities, especially in the early games, the series took on a life of its own. When Mega Man X came out, it created a second series and kicked off a trend of creating multiple Mega Man series running at the same time, some of which would intersect with each other. But enough of that, let's talk about the games. Here's the first one. Let's take a look. Mega Man. In Japan, it's called Rock Man and was developed and published by Capcom and directed by Akira Kitamura. It was released for the NES in Japan on December 18, 1987, in America sometime in the same month, and in Europe sometime in May of 1990. The PlayStation version was released on August 5, 1999. The mobile version was released in America on September 20, 2004, and in Japan on June 1, 2007. The Wii Virtual Console version was released in Europe on June 22, 2007, in Japan on August 12, 2009, and in America on January 18, 2011. The Android version was released in Japan only sometime in February of 2011. The 3DS Virtual Console version came out in Japan on July 18, 2012, in America on December 27, 2012, and in Europe on October 18, 2012. Finally, the Wii U Virtual Console version came out in America and Europe on May 2, 2013, and in Japan on May 12, 2013. On game rankings, I'm going by the mobile version, which has a 75.75, the 14th highest of the 50 games I found ranked on the site. Mega Man tells a rather simple story. Dr. Light made eight robots so advanced they're known as Robot Masters, and his rival, Dr. Wily, steals seven of them. He chose to ignore the girl robot because, you know, he's weird like that. One of the robots, Rock, managed to resist his reprogramming and went back to Dr. Light, who refit him as a battle robot to take down the other six Robot Masters, with the ability to use the abilities of defeated Robot Masters. Mega Man was a really advanced game for the time due to the fact that the first six stages could be done in any order, and as some weapons work better on robots than others, it led to a lot of experimentation to find the optimal order to do them in. First finding out which one is easiest to defeat with the regular gun, and then finding out which one's weapon works on who, and so on and so on and so on. The graphics were advanced for the time, particularly the sprites. Sprites on the NES at the time were usually limited to three colors, but Mega Man used five for the main character, and it had animations such as blinking, which really served no purpose other than showing off the technology. It had an extra bit of polish that some people didn't expect. It was also, of course, Nintendo hard. Capcom did not expect Mega Man to sell, but it became enough of a hit to warrant a sequel, and of course the sequel would set off a line of classics that are forever etched in the minds of gamers from that era. Personally, the original Mega Man is my least favorite of the NES ones, but it's still highly enjoyable. The main issue for me is the controls, which are pretty slippery, but they'd get better with each game, and by the third game, it was pretty much perfected. Anyway, on to that sequel. Mega Man 2, in Japan, is called Rockman 2, The Mystery of Dr. Wily, and was developed and published by Capcom and directed by Akira Kitamura. It was released for the NES in Japan on December 24, 1988, in America sometime in June of 1989, and in Europe sometime in January of 1989. The mobile version was released in America only sometime in June of 2007. 
The Wii Virtual Console version was released in Europe on December 14, 2007, in Japan on August 26, 2008, and in America on September 15, 2008. The iOS version was released in America only on March 26, 2009. The PlayStation version was released in Japan only on September 2, 1999. The PlayStation Network version was released in Japan on September 9, 2009, and in America on February 1, 2011. The 3DS Virtual Console version was released in Japan on August 8, 2012, and in the rest of the world on February 7, 2013. This one is not ranked by game rankings. Mega Man 2 is essentially a revenge story. Dr. Wily somehow escaped justice and is back, this time with eight robot masters of his own for Mega Man to fight. The game improves on Mega Man 1 in a number of key ways, especially as it set the standards for certain things such as having eight stages to choose from instead of six, and a password system for saving progress. Mega Man 2, by the way, uses an Arabic number on the box, but a Roman numeral on the title screen. This is pretty common for the NES games, but it's worth mentioning. Usually, I go by the title screen, but in this case, there'd be two games with the exact same title. More on that later. Mega Man 2 is considered a classic, to the point that a lot of NES fans are kind of stuck on this game and pretend like the rest of them aren't as good. Honestly, I think the series got even better after this, and unfortunately it seems the Mega Man 2 wankdom has extended to Capcom themselves, as the recent games in the classic series have taken away tried and true features to be more like Mega Man 2. Oh well. Personally, I like this one a lot. It's certainly an improvement over the original, but it does get even better. And speaking of which, it's time for the next obvious sequel, so let's take a look at that. Mega Man 3. In Japan, it's called Rockman 3, The End of Dr. Wily. Yes, that is an interrobang in the title. The series tends to do that a lot. It was developed and published by Capcom and directed by Masayoshi Kurokawa and produced by Tokuro Fujiwara. It was released for the NES in Japan on September 28, 1990, in America sometime in November of 1990, and in Europe sometime in 1992. The PlayStation version was released in Japan only on September 14, 1999. The mobile version was released in Japan on April 1, 2005, and in America on August 19, 2008. The Wii Virtual Console version was released in Japan on November 4, 2008, and America on November 10, 2008, and in Europe on November 14, 2008. The PlayStation Network version was released in Japan on April 28, 2010, and in America on March 8, 2011. The 3DS version was released in Japan on September 26, 2012, in America on March 14, 2013, and in Europe on April 4, 2013. This one is not ranked on game rankings. Mega Man 3 seemingly has Dr. Wily deciding crime doesn't pay and becoming a good guy, the first out of many in the series that would be deceptive. Wily and Light are working together on a huge robot named Gamma, because, you know, why not? However, there's eight robot masters out there wrecking havoc that you have to defeat, not only to stop them, but also to get their power crystals, which will power Gamma. Of course, as soon as you do this, Wily steals Gamma and takes control of it. Because seriously, this guy is evil. Have you seen his hair? Shit, man. Anyway, Mega Man 3 is pretty awesome. It's a lot like Mega Man 2, but there's a new move where Mega Man can slide, which is really helpful and the controls are no longer slippery at all. They were still a little bit off in the second game. I also found the level design in this one to be really good, even if the game is considerably easier than the first two. Overall, not the best in the series, but damn great. Up until this point, the series had only appeared on the NES, but it was time for PC gamers to get a taste. But sadly, this was before PC gaming was worth, was worth a tin shit, and the next game sucks donkey chode out of a giant nipple of some sort. Yeah, let's take a look. This one is just called Mega Man, and it was developed by High Tech and published by Capcom. It was released for PC only sometime in 1990. Other than that, there's not much to say other than that this game is horrific. It plays and looks nothing like the NES games, and it's hard to control and has awful sound, and it looks like the graphics were drawn by a three-year-old with problems. Mega Man only had three robot masters to fight, and the story is just that Dr. Wily is holed up at the supercomputer called Crork and that you have to defeat these three robot masters to get the three keys to go in there and kick them a new pie hole. Honestly, the less said about this one, the better. The next game would also expand the series beyond the NES and give us the first handheld Mega Man on the Game Boy. Let's take a look. Mega Man, Dr. Wily's Revenge. In Japan, it's called Rockman World. It was developed by Minokuchi Engineering and published by Capcom. It was produced by Tokuro Fujiwara. It was released for the Game Boy in Japan on July 26, 1991, in America sometime in December of 1991, and in Europe sometime in 1992. The 3DS Virtual Console version was released in Japan on June 6, 2011, and in the rest of the world on September 15, 2011. On game rankings, it has a 69, the 39th highest. 
While Capcom's first attempt at having someone else develop a Mega Man game was a disaster, this one worked. There's no story to the game, or most of the Game Boy games. Mega Man just has to fight four robot masters from the original Mega Man, and then later four more from Mega Man 2, and then beat a special robot master. One would appear in each of the first four Game Boy games, and then Dr. Wily. It's pure action with no real reason behind it. This one suffers a bit from bad stage design, but it's still pretty fun. Overall, if you have the 3DS and you're bored with the other six Mega Man games, try it out. Next, the series headed back to the NES for another main entry sequel. Let's take a look. Mega Man 4. In Japan, it's called Rock Man 4 A New Ambition. Yes, with two exclamation points. It was developed and published by Capcom and directed by Yoshinura Takanada, S. Kobayashi, and Kaiji Inafune, and it was produced by Takuro Fujiwara. It was released by the NES in Japan on December 6, 1991, in America sometime in January of 1992, and in Europe sometime in August of 1993. The PlayStation version came out in Japan only on October 28, 1999. The mobile version came out in Japan only on September 1, 2005. The Wii Virtual Console version came out in Japan on February 9, 2010, in Europe on April 16, 2010, and in America on April 19, 2010. The PlayStation Network version came out in Japan only on January 2, 2011. The 3DS Virtual Console version came out on Japan on October 18, 2012, and in America and Europe on April 25, 2013. And the Wii U Virtual Console version came out worldwide on June 11, 2013. This one is not ranked by game rankings. So yeah, Mega Man 4. In this one, there's a new threat, Dr. Cossack, the slightly offensively named Russian doctor who, just like Dr. Wily, has eight new robot masters for Mega Man to beat. Mega Man's mysterious brother, Proto Man, who had appeared a bit in the last game, is a bit smarter and knows that Dr. Cossack isn't the real bad guy. He's just forced to do the bidding of Dr. Wily because his daughter Kalinka was captured. So while Mega Man is beating up robots, he rescues the girl, and Dr. Cossack turns on his master, revealing Dr. Wily. This one is pretty awesome. It has everything Mega Man 3 had, but also introduces the Mega Buster, a new main weapon for Mega Man that you can charge up for bigger or more powerful shots. It wasn't implemented perfectly, but it's a pretty cool concept that pretty much all the games after it would use. Mega Man 4 is my favorite of the NES games. It has great levels, great graphics, great music. It's pretty much 8-bit perfection. Next up is a sequel to the first Game Boy game, which they gave the brilliant title of Mega Man 2. Yeah, let's take a look. Mega Man 2, known in Japan as Rockman World 2, was developed by Biox and published by both Capcom and Nintendo. It was produced by Takuro Fujiwara. It was released for the Game Boy in Japan on December 20th, 1991, in America sometime in February of 1992, and in Europe sometime in 1992. On game rankings, it has a 68.88, 40th of the series. Mega Man 2 may have the same title as the NES game, but this time it uses Roman numerals on the box as well as on the title screen, so that's the way most people differentiate it in writing. This is why, even though the title screens to the NES games all use Roman numerals, we refer to the NES games by their Arabic numbers, especially as later the classic series used Arabic numbers to avoid confusion with the X series. Anyway, this one is pretty good, but it was developed by a different studio than the other Mega Man games, and it shows in a major way. This game is really, really easy. It also was never re-released for any other system other than the Game Boy, though Capcom planned to release a collection of the Game Boy games on the Game Boy Advance called Mega Man Mania. It was cancelled, with rumors being that the source code for this particular game was lost. However, Capcom does plan on releasing the rest of the Game Boy games on the 3DS, so be on the lookout. This one does not have a story. It's just the other four Robot Masters for Mega Man 2 and four for Mega Man 3. Nothing amazing, but another handheld game to enjoy. Next, we'd head back to the NES for the next story-based main game, and away we go. Mega Man 5. In Japan, it's known as Rockman 5 Blues' Trap. It was developed and published by Capcom, directed by Ichiro Mihara, and produced by Tokuro Fujiwara. It was released for the NES in Japan on December 4, 1992, in America sometime in December of 1992, and in Europe sometime in 1993. The PlayStation version was released in Japan only on November 25, 1999. The mobile version was released in Japan only on October 1, 2007. The Wii Virtual Console version was released in Japan on May 31, 2011, in America on June 16, 2011, and in Europe on March 29, 2012. The PlayStation Network version was released in Japan only on August 10, 2011. The 3DS Virtual Console version was released in Japan on November 14, 2012, and in the rest of the world on May 16, 2013. This one is not rated by game rankings. 
In Mega Man 5, it seems that Mega Man's brother Proto Man has gone rogue and taken control of eight new robot masters. If you can't tell Dr. Wily is behind it, well, I might recommend Farmville for you. Anyway, Mega Man 5 is a lot like 4, just with different levels. Overall, I think they're both amazing games, and although I really like the stages in 5, towards the end of the game, the final stages are a bit duller than the previous game, so I prefer the fourth game to this one. Next up, another Game Boy game. Let's take a look. Mega Man 3. In Japan, it's known as Rockman World 3. It was developed by Minakuchi Engineering and published by Capcom and produced by Takura Fujiwara. It was released for the Game Boy in Japan on December 11, 1992, in America sometime in December of 1992, and in Europe sometime in 1993. On game rankings, it has a score of 82.50, the seventh highest in the series. Sorry about the lack of European box art. The European version of this game is particularly rare, and I couldn't find a decent scan of it. This one continues the Game Boy series tradition of a plotless game that's basically just a bunch of levels to play. This time, it gives a smattering of robot masters for Mega Man 3 and 4 from the NES. They return to Minakuchi Engineering, who developed the first Game Boy game, and they've certainly learned a lot since then. This one is much better designed than the first game, and more challenging than the second game. As if two games called Mega Man 3 wasn't slightly confusing enough already, there's another one. Let's take a look. Mega Man 3, the PC version, was developed by High Tech and published by Capcom. It was released in America only sometime in 1992. You might think this is a version of the NES title for PC, but in fact it's not, despite the fact that they use the same box art as the NES game. This is a sequel to the Mega Man PC game by the same developer, and very much in the same style, though this time around there are more levels. The quality of the game hasn't changed, though. As for why it's called Mega Man 3? Search my jock, I have no idea. There is never a Mega Man 2 for PC, only a Mega Man and a Mega Man 3. I guess they might have been trying to capitalize on Mega Man 3's success on the NES, but there had already been a Mega Man 4 and 5, so... Why name it after an older game? Who knows? Who cares? This game sucks. Most long-running series out of Japan have obscure games that are Japan only, and Mega Man is no exception. Let's take a look at the first of those now. Rockboard of Wily and Light, That's Paradise, was developed and published by Capcom and directed by Yoshinori Takanaka. This is a board game, similar to Fortune Street or Monopoly. Apparently, it was planned to have an American release, but Nintendo of America's strict censorship policies claimed that the game encouraged gambling, so that didn't happen. I haven't played this one, so I really don't have any comments, so let's just move on to the next main entry in the series. Mega Man 6. In Japan, it's known as Rockman 6, The Greatest Battle Ever. It was developed and published by Capcom, though the American one was co-published by Nintendo. It was directed by Satoshi Murata and produced by Takuro Fujiwara. It was released for the NES in Japan on October 5, 1993, and in America sometime in March of 1994. The PlayStation version was released in Japan only on December 9, 1999. The mobile version came out in Japan on October 1, 2007, and the 3DS Virtual Console version came out in Japan on December 12, 2012, in America on June 20, 2013, and finally a European version on June 11, 2013. This one is not ranked on game rankings. Mega Man 6 has a new character named Dr. X who claims to have been manipulating Dr. Wily from the get-go, which is sort of true in the way that he actually is Dr. Wily in a bad wig. Yeah. This one is interesting because they had a Robot Master design contest and some winners got their designs put in the game. It's also interesting because Mega Man can get certain adapters to merge with his dog Rush into a flight suit and a power suit form, and there are often more than one path through the stages. This one is also quite a bit harder than the last few, and it has insanely good graphics for the NES. But I tend to like this one less than Mega Man 4 and 5, or even 3. I kind of put it more on the level of 2. Still great, of course. Next up, another Game Boy game. Let's take a look. Mega Man 4, known in Japan as Rockman World 4, was developed by Minakuchi Engineering and published by Capcom, and produced by Takuro Fujiwara. It was released for Game Boy in Japan on October 29, 1993, in America sometime in December of 1993, and in Europe sometime in 1993. This one on game rankings has a score of 76.83, 29th highest of the series. Mega Man 4 for Game Boy is another really good one, and probably the best of the plotless Game Boy games. This time, it gives you some robots from Mega Man 4 and some from 5. Once again, the European version is really insanely rare, and I couldn't find a good scan of the box art. Moving on, then. Next up, the series would jump into 16-bit with a spin-off that became its own series, so let's take a look. Mega Man X, known in Japan as Rockman X, was developed and published by Capcom, though a re-released version was published by Majesco, and Nintendo handled the European version. 
It was produced by Takuro Fujiwara. Mega Man X was released for the Super NES in Japan on December 17, 1993, in America sometime in January of 1994, and in Europe sometime in May of 1994. The PC version was released in America sometime in 1995, and in Europe on May 25, 1996. The mobile version was released in Japan only on March 1, 2007. The Wii Virtual Console release was released in Japan on April 5, 2011, in America on April 18, 2011, and in Europe on March 8, 2012. The Wii U Virtual Console version was released in Japan on May 22, 2013, and in America on May 30, 2013. The Android version was released in Japan only on November 18, 2011, and the iOS version was released worldwide on December 21, 2011. Capcom, why you no release on 3DS? Anyway, this one on Game Rankings has a score of 88.50, the second highest of the series. Yes, it's that good. Mega Man X started off a new series which took place even further in the future than the Mega Man series did. The protagonist is a new type of robot called a Reploid named X, who is fighting against Reploids who have gone insane, which are called Mavericks or Irregulars. The leader of the Mavericks is a bastard named Sigma, who would become the Dr. Wily of the series, appearing in all of the games, usually as the last boss. Mega Man X very much followed the precedence of the NES titles, just with some updates, such as upgrades to extend your life meter and the Mavericks all being based on animals therefore having different designs. The Mega Man X games are more serious and tougher than the classic series, and my personal favorite of the series when I got this one. I must have played through it dozens upon dozens of times. It was an addictive game. Next off would be a spin-off so stupid that it almost tears at the very fabric of reality. Mega Man Soccer, known in Japan as Rock Man Soccer, was developed and published by Capcom and produced by Takuro Fujiwara. It was released on the Super NES in Japan on February 17, 1994, and in America sometime in April of 1994. Europe never got this one, but don't feel bad about that. On game rankings, it has a score of 64, the fourth lowest of the series. Mega Man Soccer is exactly what you think. It's a soccer game, and not even a particularly good one, with Mega Man characters. There are various characters from the classic series, each with their own abilities, and uh, they play soccer. This game is also broken. It lacks an ending due to a glitch that causes the game to kick back to the title screen instead of showing the ending. So if you manage to play this turd long enough to beat it, you get no reward at all. So yeah, don't bother. Let's move on. Next up is the final Game Boy game, but this one is quite a bit different. Let's take a look. Mega Man 5, in Japan it's called Rockman World 5, was developed by Minakuchi Engineering and published by Capcom. It was released on the Game Boy in Japan on July 22, 1994, in America sometime in September of 1994, and in Europe sometime in 1994. On game rankings, it has a score of 75.83, the 26th highest in the series. Personally, I'm rather shocked at the middle of the road, at least for Mega Man, game ranking score, as most people who have played this one consider it to be one of the very best games in the series overall. This time around, instead of taking out a bunch of robot masters from the NES games, throwing together some levels and calling it a day, they actually put a lot more thought into it, and there's even a story. The Earth is under attack from robots from space called the Star Droids, each named after a planet. And yes, of course there's a Pluto. There has to be a Pluto. Not having a Pluto as a planet is just insane. Also, yes, Dr. Wily is there, but he's not the final boss for once. Anyway, to battle these tough robots, Mega Man is given a new weapon, the Mega Arm, which lets Rock actually fire his arm at enemies for high damage instead of a charge shot. This one has really good graphics for a Game Boy game, Super Game Boy support, and some great stage design. Well, up until now, there was one increasingly large group of gamers that was missing out heavily on the Mega Man series, and that would be Sega fans. The good news is the next release fixes that. The bad news is it had a pretty limited release. Oh well, let's take a look. Mega Man The Wily Wars, known in Japan as Rockman Mega World, was developed by Minakuchi Engineering and published by Capcom. It was released for the Genesis in Japan on October 21st, 1994, in America for the Sega Channel during February of 1995, and in Europe sometime in April of 1995. Although I listed an American release, this was a Sega Channel exclusive, and there, thus it has no box art. The game ranking score for this one is 90, the highest in the series, though I want to qualify that statement, the fact that it's based on only a single review, not multiple ones. Anyway, Wily Wars is essentially a compilation that includes the first three NES titles with updated graphics for the Genesis. It also includes a new original game called Mega Man Wily Tower that could be unlocked, and as far as I know, Wily Tower has never been made available anywhere else. The game also has some minor gameplay changes. 
Mega Man 1 takes away the ability to constantly respawn power-ups, but fixes the issue with Mega Man not having invincibility to spikes when flashing. Mega Man 2 makes the game a bit harder by giving each boss mercy and invincibility, and Mega Man 3 took out a lot of the weird tricks you could do with a second player. The, out the updated graphics aren't bad, though there's a few characters that look weird, and the game is fun to play, but honestly, unless you're looking to get the Wily Tower game, it's better to just play the original versions. Next up, a sequel to Mega Man X. Let's take a look. Mega Man X2, called Rockman X2 in Japan, was developed and published by Capcom and produced by Takuro Fujiwara. It was released for the Super NES in Japan on December 16, 1994, in America sometime in January of 1995, and in Europe sometime in October of 1995. Mega Man X2 was the only game in the X series to be initially exclusive to one system, though it showed up in other places later. It showed up for the I mode in Japan only on December 1, 2008, and for Easy Web in Japan only on May 13, 2009. The Wii Virtual Console version was released in Japan on December 27, 2011, in Europe on May 31, 2012, and in America on June 14, 2012. On Game Rankings, it has a score of 82, the 8th highest in the series. This is a really good one. In the first game, X's friend Zero died beating the Vile, uh, Vile. Now there's more Mavericks that X is hunting, but at the same time, a mysterious group of Mavericks have pieces of Zero's body and are trying to bring him back under their control. If you play just right, you can collect the parts yourself and bring Zero back for real. Of course, the mysterious one pulling the strings has to be Sigma, who as it turns out is less of a robot or a reploid, and more of a virus that can inhabit new bodies. Out of the Mega Man X games, the first two are my favorite for a lot of reasons. Though the series would continue to be great, I think this one stands out as the best one. Well, up until now, it seemed that the original series would be relegated to the 8-bit era, while the Super NES was home to the X series, but that would change with the next release. Let's take a look. Mega Man 7, in Japan it's known as Rockman 7 Showdown of Destiny, was developed and published by Capcom and produced by Takuro Fujiwara. It was released for the Super NES in Japan on March 24, 1995, in America sometime in September of 1995, and in Europe sometime in 1995. On game rankings it has a score of 70.77, the 34th highest. Mega Man 7 is a direct sequel to Mega Man 6. At the end of 6, Rock finally captures Wily and puts him in jail, but it turns out Wily had a plan for this all along, as some of his robots appear to break him out of prison, and he starts going on a rampage again. There's also a new robot called Base who claims to be on Mega Man's side, but was actually Wily's attempt at making a robot of Mega Man's caliber. And yes, it's Base, as in Bass Clef or Bass Guitar, not Bass like a fish, despite what was said in the cartoons or even the voice acting in the American versions of the games themselves. He's not named after a fish, he's Wily's attempt at the kind of musical names that Dr. Light is fond of. In Japan, he's called Forte, another musical term. Mega Man 7 plays a bit like the Game Boy games, in the way that you don't have eight stages to select from from the get-go, but rather four, and then after you beat those four stages, you face another four. This one, I think, isn't really that great. I mean, it's still a good game, but not exactly a good Mega Man game. It has its moments, but it doesn't compare to the first six. A large part of this, at least for me, is because Mega Man's sprite is much larger, and it makes it much harder to maneuver him. Next up, Mega Man would finally hit arcades in a pretty good game that you probably never played. Let's take a look. Mega Man The Power Battle, known in Japan as Rockman The Power Battle, was developed and published by Capcom and directed by Koji Okahara. It was released in Japanese arcades in Japan sometime in October of 1995, and in America, it was released for GameTap sometime in July of 2006. It's also been brought here as part of a collection, but I'll talk about that later. It's not ranked on game rankings. The Power Battle's basic presentation is similar to a fighting game. You play as either Mega Man, Proto Man, or Base, and fight bosses from throughout the series. You gain their powers and can use them against other bosses, though the selection of who you fight is done with a roulette, so it can be hard to get to the proper order. There's also multiplayer, but it's head not head-to-head, -head, only co-op. Not much else to say. This is a pretty fun game, but I understand why the release was so limited. Moving on. Next up, the third in the X series. Mega Man X3, known in Japan as Rockman X3, was developed by Capcom with Minakuchi Engineering and published by Capcom. The European version was published by Virgin. It was produced by Takuro Fujiwara and was released for the Super NES in Japan on December 1, 1995, in America sometime in January of 1996, and in Europe sometime in May of 1996. The PlayStation and Saturn versions were released in Japan on March 26, 1996, and in Europe sometime in March of 1997. Those versions didn't come to America, not until the collection anyway. 
The PC version came out in Japan on March 28, 1997, and in America on October 5, 1998, and finally, the mobile version was released in Japan only on July 1, 2010. On game rankings, the Super NES version is a 70.77, the 35th in the series. Mega Man X3 introduces a new threat, an insane reploid scientist called Dr. Doppler, who is unleashing waves of mavericks on the world, though of course, he's a pawn for the return Sigma, who is now ridiculously powerful. Mega Man X3 isn't as good as the first two games. It's a whole lot harder, but in a more frustrating way, and the music, while awesome, sounds very washed out, at least on the Super NES version. The PlayStation and Saturn versions sound a lot better, but they suffer from inferior sound effects, such as the sound of X charging his buster, which will make you insane very quickly. A good point is that you can finally play as Zero, though only in certain spots, only for short periods of time, and Zero, while starting off initially very powerful, has only one life, and if he dies, it changes your ending. Overall, a great game, but definitely a notch below the first two. Next would be surprisingly another 8-bit game, though not on the NES or the Game Boy, but on the Game Gear. Let's take a look. Yep, that's right, Mega Man hit the Game Gear. It was developed by Freestyle and published by US Gold, though the upcoming 3DS release will be published by Capcom. It was released for the Game Gear in America only sometime in 1995. This one I have to admit I haven't played, but just looking at the box art, I can see Stone Man, Star Man, Napalm Man, and Bright Man, which from my research represent the only four stages in the game. So it's three guys from Mega Man 5 and one from 4. Apparently it's a bit like the Game Boy games. Moving on. Next we have another arcade game, the sequel to The Power Battle. Let's take a look. Mega Man 2 The Power Fighters. In Japan it's called Rockman 2 The Power Fighters. It was developed and published by Capcom and was directed by Koji Okuhara and produced by Noritaka Funamizu. It was released for arcades worldwide sometime in July of 1996 and the GameTap version came out in America only sometime in July of 2006. Power Fighters is pretty much the same idea, just way more refined. There are now four playable characters with the addition of Duo and three separate campaigns, one to go after Wily, one to recover parts, and one to rescue Roll. Each of these has different bosses and can be done in any order. The gameplay is essentially the same, only better, and there are a lot more endings. What makes the arcade games interesting is the story. While they're pretty simplistic, Dr. Wily has gone and fucked shit up again plots, the Power Battle was the first game to suggest that Wily was secretly working on an incredibly powerful robot, which was hinted to be Zero from the X series, making it the first game to show that Wily created Zero, and Power Fighters takes that beyond a hit and pretty much confirms it. This would wind up being explicitly stated in the next mainline X game, but the arcade games were the first to suggest it. Next up, we jump to the next generation with the next main entry in the Classic series. Let's take a look. Mega Man 8, known in Japan as Rockman 8 Metal Heroes, was developed and published by Capcom, though the European version was published by Ocean. It was directed by Yahado Kaji and produced by Kaiji Inafune and Yoshinori Takanaka. It was released for PlayStation in Japan on December 17, 1996, in America on February 28, 1997, and in Europe sometime in October of 1997. The Saturn version was released in Japan on January 17, 1997, and in America sometime in January of 1997. On game rankings, the Saturn version has a 76.25, the 25th highest in the series, putting it precisely in the middle of the road. And that sounds about right. This is a pretty badass game, but I'd come short of calling it a classic. It's a lot like Mega Man 7, what with the two groups of four stages and the more detailed sprites and animation, but it's a lot better than Mega Man 7. It seems that Capcom was destined to make the classic series more cartoonish and colorful, with the X series looking darker and more hard-edged. Mega Man's 8's main flaw is the voice acting, especially since Rock sounds like a little girl and can seem, can't seem to pronounce bass. The plot involves going after Wily again, who is competing with Dr. Light to get pieces of a stellar object that fell to Earth. The game also introduces Duo, the robot from space, who had appeared in the Power Fighters but makes a proper entrance here. Mega Man 8 is a lot of fun. It's definitely more so than 7, but I still play it less than the other games by an, on average. Next up, it's not a true legendary series unless there's a kart racing game, right? Let's do that. Mega Man Battle and Chase, simply called Rockman Battle and Chase in Japan, was developed and published by Capcom and produced by Keiji Yanafune. It was released for the PlayStation in Japan on March 20th, 1997, and in Europe sometime in April of 1998. The game rankings has a score of 73, the 31st in the series. Battle and Chase is a pretty standard kart racing game, similar to Mario Kart, though the Mega Man tradition of defeating racers and taking their powers is shown when you defeat a robot on one-on-one -on -one race in the track, and then you have the option of either taking their engine, tires, or frame for your own kart. 
but you can only use one of each part at a time. It's all about finding the right combinations, and you can race them on higher difficulties again to get all the parts. This is a surprisingly fun game that has a lot more to it than being a simple Mario Kart ripoff. And although it was never released in America by itself, you can get it as part of the X Collection. Oddly enough. And I did play it quite a lot on the GameCube there, but yeah, let's move on. Next up, the X series also moves on to the next generation. Let's take a look. Mega Man X4, known in Japan as Rockman X4, was developed and published by Capcom. It was directed by Koji Okohara and produced by Keiji Yanafune and Yoshinori Takanada. It was released for the Saturn in Japan on August 1st, 1997, and in America sometime in September of 1997. The PlayStation version was released in Japan on August 1st, 1997, in America sometime in 1997, and in Europe on October 13th, 1997. The PC version was released in Japan on December 3rd, 1998, and in America and Europe sometime in 1999. The mobile version came out in Japan on December 25th, 2011, and then again on January 1st, 2012. More on that in a sec. On game rankings, the Saturn version has a score of 75.25, the 27th highest in the series. Mega Man X4 is a really good one. This time, you have the ability to choose between X and Zero at the start, and you can play as the whole game with your character of choice, and it's slightly different with who you choose, except the mobile version. The original mobile version has you only playing as X, and then the second release was only as Zero. Basically, they sold both modes separately as two games. X4 has some cutscenes and voice acting, and while it's not perfect, it's done a hell of a lot better than Mega Man 8, and the gameplay is pretty neat. I really don't have any complaints about this one, but I put it on the same level as the first Mega Man X and its sequel. Next up would be a Mega Man RPG? Well, not quite, but that's the way it was originally marketed. Let's take a look. Mega Man Legends, known in Japan as Rockman Dash Adventurous Spirit of Steel, and the Nintendo 64 version is simply called Mega Man 64, was developed by Capcom Production Studio and produced by Capcom. It was directed by Yoshinori Kawano and produced by Keiji Inafune. It was released for the PlayStation in Japan on December 19, 1997, in America on August 31, 1998, and in Europe on December 4, 1998. The Nintendo 64 version was released in Japan on November 22, 2000, and in America on January 10, 2001. The PC version was released in America only on July 14, 2001, and the PlayStation Portable version was released in Japan only on August 4, 2005. On game rankings, the PlayStation version has a score of 73.73. .73 the 30th of the series. Mega Man Legends essentially starts a new series unrelated to the previous ones, though it apparently does fall into the timeline. It's far, far into the future, way past the X series, and the main character is not a robot or a reploid, but a person. The game is not an RPG, despite what Capcom may have originally said during development. It's an action game at its heart, but it also has a lot of RPG elements, like Zelda-style exploration and NPCs to talk to. It doesn't play like a classic Mega Man game, seeing as how this one also goes into full 3D, but it's pretty fun and worth a look if you can go into it without expecting to be blown away. Next up, the classic series returns, but not in the way you might have expected. Let's take a look. Mega Man and Base, known in Japan as Rockman and Forte, was developed and published by Capcom and directed by Hayato Tsuru and Manubu Takamura, and produced by Keiji Inafune. It was released for the Super NES in Japan only on April 24, 1998. The Game Boy Advance version was released in Japan on August 10, 2002, in America on March 11, 2003, and in Europe on March 31, 2003. On game rankings, the Game Boy Advance version has a score of 79.53, the 13th highest in the series. This one I first found out via emulation, with various ROM sites erroneously referred to it as Mega Man 9. Yes, it's the ninth classic game, but no, it's not that. What's interesting is that the initial release on the Super NES, or rather the Super Famicom in Japan, while it seems weird that Capcom would move the series to PlayStation and then go backwards to the Super NES, especially since releasing a Super NES game in 1998, a few years after the Nintendo 64 was already out, but the Super NES was doing great in, in Japan at this late, and the Nintendo had come up with a download service called Nintendo Power, not related to the magazine. It started sort of a mini-revolution of late-era Super NES games. I remember some of the other games from that year, like Kirby Sparkling Kids and Wrecking Crew 98. Some of these games also had limited cartridge releases. Eventually, we did get the game on Game Boy Advance, of course. Mega Man and Base is interesting because it reuses a lot of the graphics from Mega Man 8 and the sound effects from Mega Man 7. 
This is probably my least favorite game in the Classic series because it's ridiculously hard. Certain bosses like Burner Man and Dynamo Man will make you want to fuck a naughty pine in rage. Mega Man games are almost all challenging, and any fan of the game is used to them being hard, but this one is ridiculous. That being said, it's not a bad game, and for the Super NES, the graphics were really advanced, though the music was not as great as the previous games in the series. Another weird thing is that it reused two of the robots from Mega Man 8. Both Tengu Man and Astro Man reappear, though they act differently. Yeah, let's move on. Next up is a bizarre Japan-only spin-off. Here it is. Super Adventure Rockman was developed by Koyusha and published by Capcom. It was released for PlayStation and Saturn in Japan only on June 24, 1998. Super Adventure Rockman is essentially a visual novel that also contains some brief action sequences in first person that play kind of like a light gun game without the light gun. It was fully acted and animated, and it's pretty interesting, though Keiji Yonafune would later disown the game as he claimed it was far too violent. Next up, the Legend series, which if you remember only had one game so far, would get a spin-off. Let's take a look. The Misadventures of Tron Bone, in Japan it's called Tron and Henchmen, was developed by Capcom Production Studio 2 and published by Capcom, though the European version was published by Eidos. It was released for PlayStation in Japan on June 22, 1999, in America on April 30, 2000, and in Europe on June 16, 2000. On game rankings, it has a score of 77.06, the 23rd highest in the series. And wow, only Europe got good box art. Tron Bone was a fairly popular character from Legends, and this spin-off centers mostly around her, and is essentially a collection of smaller games set in the same universe. The game does have a story, which is a prequel to the first game, and involves Tron trying to pay off her father's debt. Not really a lot to say about this one, as I've only played it a little bit, so let's move onwards. Well, here's an obscure one. Did you know there was a sequel to Mega Man and Base? Well, yeah, Mega Man 9, of course, but between Mega Man and Base and Mega Man 9, there was a handheld game that acted as a direct sequel. So let's take a look. Rockman and Forte, Challenger from the Future, was developed by Capcom and published by Bandai. It was released for the Wonderswan in Japan only on October 21st, 1999. So yeah, Mega Man hits the Wonderswan and, uh, yeah. I haven't played this one, but I looked into it, and it has a completely original cast of robots to fight. So if you ever wondered why you never saw a Compass Man or a Clock Man, it's because they were used in this game. Not much else to say, so I'm moving on. Next up, the true sequel to Mega Man Legends. Let's take a look. Mega Man Legends 2, known in Japan as Rockman Dash 2 Episode 2 The Great Inheritance, was developed and published by Capcom. It was directed by Yoshinori Kawano and produced by Keiji Yanafune. It was released for the PlayStation in Japan on April 20, 2000, in America on October 24, 2000, and in Europe on August 3, 2001. The PC version was released in Japan only on May 30, 2003, and the PlayStation Portable version was released in Japan only on September 8, 2005. This game is pretty much a refined version of the original. The gameplay and graphics are a bit better, but it pretty much is the same type of game. The story this time around has to do with Roll trying to find her parents and Mega Man attempting to help Barrel Casket, who is trapped in a sinking ship. The sad part is that the ending was a definite cliffhanger, and for the longest time, fans would wait for a third game, which would finally get announced for the 3DS and then cancelled approximately five seconds later. Dick move, Capcom. Next up, the two arcade games would be stripped down to 8-bit and brought to a handheld. Let's take a look. Rockman Battle and Fighters, this one never left Japan, was developed and published by Capcom and directed by Kaiji Yonafune. It was released for the Neo Geo Pocket Color in Japan only on July 30, 2000. This basically contains the two arcade games, though the graphics are 8-bit, not quite NES, but more like Game Boy Color quality. It's pretty cool, but we didn't get it here in America at all, and I never played it, so not much to say. Moving on. Next up, the X-Series would get a handheld spin-off, much in the vein of the original Game Boy games. Let's take a look. Mega Man Extreme, known in Japan as Rockman X Cyber Mission, was developed and published by Capcom and directed by Koji Okohara and produced by Tatsuya Minami. It was released for Game Boy Color in Japan only on October 20, 2000, in America on January 10, 2001, and in Europe on August 24, 2001. On game rankings, it has a score of 77.08, the 22nd of the series. So this one is pretty much the X version of the Game Boy series. It takes four Mavericks from Mega Man X and four from Mega Man X2 and puts you up against them, though you have to play on a higher difficulty to fight all eight. This one actually has a plot, though. 
A new threat called Techno is hacking into the computer of the Maverick Hunter base, and X has to go into cyberspace to fix everything, which explains why already dead Maverick reploids are present. Is Sigma really the one behind it? Of course he is, are you an ass? Duh. Extreme was pretty good, though it was a bit rough to play an X game with only two buttons, especially if you're used to using a dedicated button for dashing. But hey, we did get something on the Game Boy Color, so there's that. Next up, the X series, we get another main game, so let's take a look. Mega Man X5, called Rockman X5 in Japan, was developed by Capcom Production Studio 3 and Value Wave and published by Capcom. It was directed by Koji Okuhara. It was released for PlayStation in Japan on November 30th, 2000, in America on January 31st, 2001, and in Europe on August 3rd, 2001. The PC version was released in Asia on July 30th, 2001, in Japan in particular on May 24th, 2002, and in America on August 20th, 2002. On game rankings, the PlayStation version is a 72.73, the 32nd highest of the series. Mega Man X5 is a really interesting game. Basically with this one, Keiji and Afune stepped back a bit and didn't involve himself as much with the development. But he wanted this one to be the last Mega Man X game, giving the series a final ending and transitioning into a new series that would star Zero. But actually, that was his original idea for the X series to begin with. Zero was originally envisioned as the main character of a game called Maverick Hunter X, but it evolved to what was known as Mega Man X. Because it was originally envisioned as the last game in the series, this one relies heavily on nostalgia to both previous X games and the original series. And for some odd reason, the Mavericks were all renamed for the American release to be named after members of Guns N' Roses. Rumor has it this was due to an American Capcom employee's infatuation with the band, though this has never been confirmed. This one is really good, easily my favorite of the PlayStation games, though if I had one complaint, it's the game's action being interrupted quite often by dialogue with Alia. I don't mind the story, it's just that when you've played it already a bunch of times, it gets old. Up next, Mega Man would reach the Game Boy Advance, though in a completely new series that was unlike any of the previous games. Let's take a look. Mega Man Battle Network, known in Japan as Battle Network Rockman EXE, was developed by Capcom Production Studio 2 and published by Capcom. It was directed by Masahiro Yasuma and produced by Keiji Inafune. It was released for Game Boy Advance in Japan on March 21, 2001, in America on October 31, 2001, and in Europe on November 30, 2001. On game rankings, it has a score of 79.53, the 13th highest of the series. Battle Network is basically a hybrid of a card-based RPG and an adventure game. The previous series all connected to each other. The Mega Man series was first, the X series being in the future of that, and the Legend series in the future of that. But Battle Network gives us a completely new continuity. It does use names of characters from the other series, but for the most part, it's its own thing. In the game you play as a young boy named Lan. His father is basically Dr. Light, though he's called Dr. Hikari. Hikari means light in Japanese. Lan, like most other people, has a virtual companion called a Net Navi. In this case, it's called Mega Man, and he can patrol the internet and fight viruses. The villains are a group of cy cyber terrorists known as World 3, led by Lord Wily. There's a lot of interacting with the people in Land's neighborhood, like his school friends and whatnot, and almost everybody has their own net navvies, usually named after classic Robot Masters or Mega Man characters. I remember when I played this game, I thought the characters and interactions were what made it interesting, and I predicted that it would make a pretty good kids cartoon show, which did happen in the form of Mega Man NT Warrior, though I haven't seen it, it was pretty popular. Battle Network is a great game, but you have to leave behind any preconception of side-scrolling action. It's nothing like that. But, the next game I'm covering would be exactly like that, another X game for the Game Boy Color. Here it is. Mega Man Extreme 2, known in Japan as Rockman X2 Soul Eraser, was developed and published by Capcom. It was directed by Koji Okohara and produced by Koji Nakanama and Tatsuya Minami. It was released for the Game Boy Color in Japan on July 19, 2001, in America sometime in November of 2001, and in Europe on February 8, 2002. On game rankings, it has a score of 74.17, the 28th highest of the series. In this one, someone is going around stealing the souls of Reploids. Yes, they apparently have souls. And usually this kills them, but sometimes the soul gets replaced by the Maverick virus and they go insane. So X and Zero have to kill them. This one uses Mavericks from all three Super NES titles, and you face 4 as X and 4 as Zero. Should we be surprised that Sigma is behind everything? No? Okay, moving on. Next up, another one of those weird Japanese spin-offs, and here it is. 
Rockman's strategy was developed by Dream Come True and published by Capcom. It was released for the PC in Japan only on October 29, 2001. Even though it was released in Japan, the game was developed by a Chinese developer and is very hard to find, and as far as I know, it's never been translated. Obviously, it's a strategy game, and apparently Dr. Wily is the bad guy, but other than that, I don't know. Let's move on. The X series gets another game le next. Let's take a look. Mega Man X6, called Rockman X6 in Japan, was developed by Capcom Production Studio 2 and Value Wave and published by Capcom. It was directed by Koji Okohara. Mega Man X6 was released for the PlayStation in Japan on November 19, 2001, in America on December 4, 2001, and in Europe on February 8, 2002. The PC version came out in Korea on December 13, 2002, and in the rest of Asia on June 13, 2003. On Game Rankings, the PlayStation version has a score of 68.74, the 42nd highest of the series. X6 involves a reploid scientist named Gate who is causing all sorts of problems. He's gone insane in his study of the Maverick virus and is attempting to resurrect Sigma. X6 is a sort of a weird one because a lot of people didn't like it, but I think it's still pretty good. Mainly the issue is that the series was supposed to end with X5, and Capcom went and continued it anyway, having to gloss over certain aspects of the ending of the last game, such as Zero not having to return to life three years later, and X having moved on. This game takes place three weeks later. But you know what? Who cares? It's a fun game. Yes, this one is really, really hard, though. Easily it's the hardest X game so far, and you can screw yourself over by not getting certain parts. But no matter what, there's always a way to power through. Is it as good as the last two games? No. But does it totally suck rancid Gorilla Foreskin? Absolutely not. Next up, to absolutely no one's surprise, Battle Network got a sequel. Let's take a look. Mega Man Battle Network 2, in Japan it's called Battle Network Rockman EXE 2, was developed by Capcom Production Studio 2 and published by Capcom. It was directed by Masahiro Yasuma and produced by Keiji Inafune. It was released for Game Boy Advance in Japan on December 14, 2001, in America on June 12, 2002, and in Europe on October 18, 2002. On Game Rankings, it has a score of 81.66, the 11th highest of the series. Wily was defeated and the World 3 terrorist group are gone, but now there's a new cyber threat called Gospel. In case you were wondering, in Japan, Gospel is the name of Bass's dog in the classic series. Here the dog was called Treble. Lan joins a group of net battlers and winds up traveling around the world combating Gospel. This one is pretty much a lot like the first one, just tweaked. The gameplay is much the same, but tweaked. The graphics are almost identical, just tweaked. Pretty much every aspect of the game is brimming with familiarity, but it's all slightly evolved. Let's see what's next. Ah uh, yes, remember how I said the end of the Mega Man X series, which was supposed to be X5, but at this point it was whenever, would lead to another X series? Let's do that. Here it is. Mega Man Zero, called Rockman Zero in Japan, was developed by Inti Creates and published by Capcom. It was directed by Ryota Ido and Yoshinori Kawano, and produced by Takua Aizu and Keiji Inafune. It was released for the Game Boy Advance in Japan on April 26, 2002, in America on September 10, 2002, and in Europe on October 31, 2002. On Game Rankings, it has a score of 81.20, the 12th highest of the series. Mega Man Zero takes place much further in the future than the X series, though not as much as the Legend series, making the chronology so far the Classic series, the X series, the Zero series, and then the Legend series, with the Battle Network series being on its own. Zero has been in suspended animation for a long time, and he's revived by a young girl named Seal who is studying some runes and trying to escape from an army of insane reploid drones who look suspiciously like X. The X copies have pretty much taken over the world, and Seal and some remaining humans and reploids are living in a resistance base. This one was really cool. Zero got to use either a buster, his sword, or two new weapons, and the game has a sort of open exploration Metroid type of feel that we hadn't yet gotten in a side-scrolling Mega Man game. Although the storyline and general atmosphere is quite a lot darker than the previous games, the classic series was also bright and colorful and cheerful, while the X games are more dark and dramatic, this one takes it to the extreme. Great game. Highly recommended, though it is old school hard. You can actually fail missions and miss out completely that way. Next up, another Battle Network game. Here it is. This time around, there were two versions of the game, much like Nintendo's Pokemon series. They're called Mega Man Battle Network 3 Blue Version and White Version. In Japan, the game is called Battle Network Rockman EXE 3, and there was only one version. However, later on, there was a black version that was released in Japan. The game was released for the Game Boy Advance in Japan on December 6, 2002. 
The black version came out March 28, 2003. The main two games were released in America on June 24, 2003, and in Europe on July 4, 2003. On game rankings, the white version has a 77.91, the 17th highest of the series. For the American and European versions, the difference between the white and blue version was mainly the chips that appear, though there are some very minor plot differences such as fighting different bosses. In Japan, the black version exists to add new content and fix bugs from the original release. The story in this one has Land back at home and him and his friends entering a battle chip tournament. Meanwhile, the World 3 organization, as well as Lord Wily, have returned. The gameplay continues to evolve, though only mildly so. That's sort of the great thing about the Battle Network games. None of the main entries are drastically different, and you feel comfortable playing each one. Next up would be the Battle Network series' first spin-off. Let's take a look. Rockman EXCWS was developed by Capcom Production Studio 2 and published by Bandai. It was released for the Wonderswan Color in Japan on February 8, 2003. Obviously, it's a Wonderswan game, and this one was never released outside of Japan. This one is not an adventure RPG hybrid like the Game Boy Advance games, but rather a side-scrolling game similar to the classic series, but taking place in the same continuity as the Battle Network games. The plot is pretty much an excuse plot that just has Lan and Mega Man fighting the World 3 and viruses. There's not a whole lot to say, so I'll just be moving on. Next up, the next game in the Zero series. Mega Man Zero 2, known in Japan as Rockman Zero 2, was developed by Inti Creates and published by Capcom. It was directed by Ryota Ito and Yoshinori Kawano and produced by Takuya Aizu and Keiji Inafune. It was released for the Game Boy Advance in Japan on May 2, 2003, in America on October 14, 2003, and in Europe on October 31, 2003. On game rankings, it has a score of 82.84, the ninth highest in the series. Yeah, not Zero, that's a typo, fucking hell. Anyway, in the game, Zero has left the Resistance base and has been wandering around for a year and is in pretty bad shape when he comes across Seal, who takes him back to the base, which is now under new management. New sinister management, that is. The weapons are slightly different, and there's some gameplay changes, but it's very much in the same vein as the first one. Next up, another side-scroller Battle Network spin-off. This time we got it in America. Let's take a look. Mega Man Network Transmission, known in Japan as Rockman EXE Transmission, was developed by Arika and published by Capcom. It was directed by Akira Kurobayashi and produced by Keiji Yanafune and Ichiru Mihara. It was released for the GameCube in Japan on March 6, 2003, in America on March 17, 2003, and in Europe on March 27, 2003. On game rankings, it has a score of 66.80, the 43rd highest in the series. Network Transmission takes place between the first and second Battle Network games and has the life virus from the first game returning, and it leads into the second game's gospel storyline with having Base as a secret boss. This one is pretty good, though the difficulty curve is all backwards. The game starts out very hard, but gets significantly easier later on, which can be an issue. The graphics are cel-shaded, which gives the game a 2D look, despite it being technically in 3D. It's sort of that 2.5D thing. It was hardly one of the best games in the series, but I enjoyed it. Anyway, moving on. Next up, the X-Series returns, and we all wish it did it. Ugh, let's take a look. Mega Man X7, known in Japan as Rockman X7, was developed by Capcom Production Studio 3 and published by Capcom. It was directed by Koji Okohara and produced by Tatsuya Kitabayashi. It was released for PlayStation 2 in Japan on July 17, 2003, and America on October 14, 2003, and in America on March 5, 2004. The PC version came out in Korea only on December 31, 2003. On game rankings, the PlayStation 2 version has a 59.73, the third lowest of the series. So yeah, this game is really, really bad. Not even bad for a Mega Man game, but just bad. It takes the series into 3D, but it still keeps some side-scrolling sections, and it gives us some pretty nice 3D graphics, but the actual gameplay suffers from poor controls. The game also introduces a new character named Axel. You start with Axel and Zero, and you can switch between them at any point. You have to play for a while before you can play as X, despite him being, you know, the main character. The plot is a lot like X4, only take out Repliforce and put in Red Alert. Axel was a member of Red Alert and decides to defect to the Maverick Hunter, starting a war between the two, which somehow also involves Sigma, because, you know, why not? This one isn't any fun, and I never got through the whole thing because I always thought of better things to do, like Sanskrit spelling bees. Anyway, let's move on. Next up, we have a Battle Network spin-off that Game Ranking said is the worst Mega Man game. Let's take a look. Mega Man Battle Chip Challenge, known in Japan as Rockman EXE Battle Chip GP, 
It was developed by Inti Creates and Capcom Production Studio 2 and published by Capcom. It was produced by Keiji and Afine. It was released for the Wonder Swan Color in Japan only on August 8, 2003. The Game Boy Advance version was released in Japan on August 8, 2003, in America on March 2, 2004, and in Europe on March 19, 2004. On game rankings, it has a score of 49.90, the lowest of the series. So, what's the deal with this one? It takes place after Battle Network 3, and like that game, it involves a battle chip tournament, with the winner getting a super rare chip or something. This one has a lot more RPG and strategy elements than the other games in the series, but from the reactions of most people, it didn't do it well enough. Is it really that bad? I can't tell you as I haven't played it, but it seems the main complaint against this game is a confusing battle system and documentation that does nothing to help alleviate the confusion. Anyway, let's move on to the next main entry in the Battle Network series. Here it is. Once again, there are two versions, this time in all regions. They are known as Mega Man Battle Network 4 Red Sun and Blue Moon versions. In Japan, it's Rockman EXC 4 Tournament Red Sun and Tournament Blue Moon. It was developed by Capcom Production Studio 2 and pu published by Capcom. It was directed by Masahiro Yasuma and produced by Keiji Inafune. The game was released for the Game Boy Advance in Japan on December 14, 2003, in America on June 27, 2004, and in Europe on October 18, 2004. On game rankings, the red version has a 70.75, the 36th highest in the series. This one takes place a few months after 3, and I assume after Battle Chip Challenge. This time around, there's two threats coming, one in the form of a new net navi terrorizing the internet, the other an asteroid heading for Earth. This introduces the Battle Network version of Duo, who this time around is a villain, which is pretty interesting. The gameplay still hasn't changed a whole lot. Minor changes, and the two versions mainly differentiating you fighting different bosses along the way in each version. I guess it seems most people prefer the red one, but they're basically the same game. Next up is the next Zero game. Let's take a look. Mega Man Zero 3, known in Japan as Rockman Zero 3, was developed by Inti Creates and published by Capcom. It was directed by Ryota Ito and Yoshinora Kawano and produced by Takuya Aizu and Keiji Inafune. It was released for the Game Boy Advance in Japan on April 23, 2004, in America on October 5, 2004, and in Europe on September 3, 2004. On game rankings, it has a score of 78.16, the 15th highest of the series. Mega Man Zero 3 introduces some new characters such as Omega and Dr. Whale, the ultimate evil of the Mega Man series, as well as a new version of X and a new weapon for Zero. This one's really good, though it plays down the exploration aspects of the last two games and gives us a more traditional stage-based gameplay. I also found the graphics in this one to be really stylized and cool. Moving on. Next up is one of my favorite releases, an epic collection of Mega Man games from the Classic series. Let's take a look. Mega Man Anniversary Collection was developed by Atomic Planet Entertainment and published by Capcom. It was released for PlayStation 2 in America on June 23, 2004 on the GameCube in America on the same day, and for the Xbox in America on March 15, 2005. This one has never saw the light of day in Japan or Europe. On game rankings, the GameCube version has an 82.58, the sixth highest of the series. Anniversary Collection gives you the classic series from the original Mega Man on NES up until Mega Man 8. Mega Man 1 through 6 and 8 are all based off the PlayStation versions, though there's options for the first 6 to ditch the extra features and play exactly like the NES versions. Mega Man 7 is pretty much a straight port, but due to issues with emulating Mode 7 graphics, the ending is partially cut out. Also included were the two arcade games, the Power Battle and the Power Fighters, which are unlockable. I had the GameCube version, and it's great, though it oddly reverses the buttons for shoot and jump. You do get used to it after a while, but it's weird that it's like that, and there's no option to remap it. Some people have told me that the other versions are also like that, and some have said that they're not. But it seems like everyone has the GameCube version, and it's always like, I heard it's fixed for PlayStation 2, or I heard the PlayStation 2 version is the same. Nobody ever speaks from experience. Hey, if anyone actually owns this for PlayStation 2 or Xbox, let me know. Well, actually, I take that back. First, check the comments to see if anyone else has already let me know, because the last thing I need is the same comment over and over again for the next four years. One other thing to mention. The GameCube version has a documentary about the history and creation of the series included, while the PlayStation 2 version instead gives us an episode of the terrible Mega Man cartoon. Unsure of what the Xbox One has, since once again that's another one. A case of, I heard it has this, instead of speaking from actual experience. One last thing to talk about is that Capcom also solicited a Game Boy Advance version. 
which was supposedly would have collected all the Game Boy games, which would have been awesome, however it missed its projected release date several times. Eventually the name was changed to Mega Man Mania, but it still never came out, and Capcom had to eventually admit that they quietly cancelled the game. Oh well, let's move on. Next up would be an honest-to-goodness Mega Man RPG. No fake-outs this time. Let's take a look. Mega Man X Command Mission, known in Japan as Rockman X Command Mission, was developed by Capcom Production Studio 3 and published by Capcom. It was directed by Yoshinora Tanaki and produced by Koji Nakajima. It was released for PlayStation 2 and GameCube in Japan on July 29, 2004, in America on September 21, 2004, and in Europe on November 19, 2004. On game rankings, the PlayStation 2 version has a 69.04, the 39th highest of the series. This is an RPG that continues the X-Series storyline and has some pretty nice-looking cel-shaded graphics and gameplay reminiscent of Final Fantasy X. If you're looking for an epic story, well, you might want to play another game. The story in this game is really predictable and by the numbers, but the gameplay does make up for it. It really is a very fun RPG. I actually kind of wish that there were a few more like this, just with better writing. If you don't figure out that the big bad guy Redips is Spider spelled backwards and that the dude named Spider in your own party is really shady, well, stick to Pokemon because I'm sure you'll tell me the story and that is amazing. Other than that, there's not much to say. I was kind of surprised by the lower game ranking score, but what can you do? Let's move on. Next up, while Japan didn't get the anniversary collection, they didn't want to miss out on getting a home version of the arcade game, so here that is. Rockman Power Battle Fighters was developed and published by Capcom and released for the PlayStation 2 in Japan only on August 5, 2004. Essentially, it's the two arcade games for PlayStation 2. Yeah, we didn't get it, but literally the same content and way more is in the anniversary collection, and we got GameCube and Xbox versions as well, so overall, I'm going to call that one a win. Next up is the halfway point between Battle Network 4 and the next game, and this one has the most literal title ever. Let's take a look. Rockman EXE 4.5 Real Operation was developed by Capcom Production Studio 2 and published by Capcom. It was released for Game Boy Advance in Japan only on August 6, 2004. Yeah, I was unable to find any real info about this game, except that apparently it's a lot like Battle Chip Challenge, which, judging from the less than warm response that game got, is probably the reason this one was never localized. Now well, let's move on. Next up is another X game, this time trying to redeem the series, but instead it just kind of killed it. Here it is. Mega Man X8, known in Japan as Rockman X8, was developed by Capcom Production Studio 1 and published by Capcom and Taito, and was directed by Iro Shirahama. It was released for PlayStation 2 in America on December 7, 2004, in Europe on February 11, 2006, in Japan on March 10, 2006. The PC version was released in Japan on March 10, 2006, and in Europe on September 21, 2005. On game rankings, the PlayStation 2 version has a score of 69.23, the 38th highest of the series. Man, whoever does the European box art for the Mega Man games is obsessed with sunburst patterns. Anyway, X8 is a lot better than X7, but it's kind of not saying much. It's not a good sign when the American version comes out a full two years before the Japanese version, despite being developed in Japan. And in Japan, the PC version beats the PlayStation 2 version to the gate by a full year. The hell was going on with that? Anyway, the Reploid Wars got so out of hand that the humans fuck off into space and even use an elevator to get to the moon because they got their technology from old silent films. The only really interesting thing about this one is that Sigma is no longer the final boss, though he is in it. This one emphasized side-scrolling more than X7, and it fixed a lot of the issues with it, but the graphics took a downgrade in my opinion. This would be more or less the end of the X series, as anything after this was either a collection or a remake. Sad but true. Let's move on. Next up, more Battle Network. Let's take a look. Mega Man Battle Network 5. The two versions are Team Proto Man and Team Colonel, and are known in Japan as Rockman EXE 5 Team of Blues and Team of Colonel. And the DS version is known as Mega Man Battle Network 5 Double Team DS internationally, and Rockman 5 DS Twin Leaders in Japan. Whew. Anyway, all this was developed by Capcom Production Studio 2 and published by Capcom and was produced by Keiji Yanafune. The Game Boy Advance version was released in Japan, staggered. The Blues version came out on December 9, 2004, and the Colonel version on February 24, 2005. Both versions were released in Europe on June 10, 2005, and in America on June 21, 2005. The DS version was released in Japan 
on July 21, 2005, in America on November 1, 2005, in Europe on April 13, 2006, and in Australia on April 12, 2007. On game rankings, the DS version has a 69.53, the 37th highest in the series. Battle Network 5 introduces a new villain called Dr. Regal, whose organization Nebula takes over the entirety of the internet and kidnaps Dr. Li- uh, uh, Dr. Hikari. But somehow, when doing this, he neglects to grab Mega Man, so of course Lan and Mega Man are off to stop him, this time along with a team of other net battlers. Once again, there's some new features or returning features and improved graphics, but it's pretty much the same thing. The DS version is a compilation of both versions of the game, so if you want to know which one to get, get the DS one. Anyway, not much else to say, so let's move on to another Battle Network spin-off that we didn't get. <coughs> Here we go. Rockman EXE Phantom of Network was developed and published by Capcom. It was released for mobile phones in Japan sometime in 2004. Yeah, I have almost no information about this one. Even the Mighty Mega Man homepage doesn't mention this game. It's a mobile game, so... Uh, yeah, you might have noticed that I haven't mentioned any mobile games up until now because there are so many, I can never cover them all. And most of them are generic mini games like slot machines and whatnot with Mega Man logos and characters slapped on them. But this one is an honest to goodness Battle Network game. Even beyond that, though, I have no idea, so let's go on. Next up, let's bring the Zero series to a close. Here's the vital stats. Mega Man Zero Four, known in Japan as Rockman Zero Four, was developed by Indie Creates and Natsum and published by Capcom. It was directed by Ryota Ito and Yoshinura Koano and produced by Takuya Aizu, Kaiji Inafune, and Ken Horonochi. It was released for the Game Boy Advance in Japan on April 21st, 2005, in America on October 4th, 2005, in Australia on September 14th, 2005, and in Europe on September 16th, 2005. On game rankings, it has a 77.39, the 19th highest of the series. This game chronicles the final showdown between Zero and the evil Dr. Whale, who claims to be none other than the devil himself, who just wants to enslave humanity and reploids alike, and turn the entire world into a giant desert with just one huge city existing as civilization. Kind of like the Super Mario Bros. movie. Man, that is evil. What a cock. This is pretty much the best one, and... For once, Inafune got his wish to end the series gracefully, and it wasn't resurrected without his approval. That wraps up the Zero series, so let's move on to another ending. This time, the Battle Network series would see its end. Here we go. Mega Man Battle Network 6. The versions are called Cybeast Gregar and Cybeast Falzar. They're known in Japan as Rockman EXE 6, Cyberbeast Gregar, and Cyberbeast Falzar. It was developed by Capcom Production Studio 2 and published by Capcom. It was directed by Masahiro Yasuma and Shinsuke Kodama and produced by Kaiji Inafune. It was released for the Game Boy Advance in Japan on November 23, 2005, in America on June 13, 2006, and Europe on June 16, 2006. The Cybeast Gregar version on game rankings has a score of 65.38, the 44th highest of the series. Yeah, I guess people are getting tired of this series at this point. Though to be honest, what do they expect? It builds up on the previous games, and it makes slight tweaks. This one is the last game in the Battle Network series, however. It has land moving away, giving the game a new setting and some new characters. This ends the series, bringing back Wily one last time and giving the origin of Mega Man himself. He was Land's older brother, Hub, yes, Dr. Light is an asshole in this series, who died and his DNA was transferred into a net navi somehow, and that's how Mega Man was born. And this game has him getting a real body and entering the real world. It also gives him an epilogue that shows what happens to all the characters 20 years later. So, if any of you were out there wondering if Lan and Mail ever grew up and totally banged, I can tell you, yes, they totally did, you sick fucks. Anyway, first the X series petered out, the classic series hadn't been seen in a long time, and Zero and Battle Network came to an end. Pretty depressing for Mega Man fans, eh? Well, there is some hope, as there would be remakes of the first X game and the first classic game to revitalize the series though they were very different. Let's take a look at the X one. Mega Man Maverick Hunter X, known in Japan as Irregular Hunter X, was developed and published by Capcom. It was released for the PlayStation Portable in Japan on December 15, 2005, in America on January 31, 2006, in Europe on March 3, 2006, and in Asia on May 8, 2008. The PlayStation Network version came to America on October 29, 2009, in Europe on November 19, 2009, and in Japan on December 16, 2009. On game rankings, it has a score of 81.66, the 10th highest of the series. 
You might remember me stating that Inafune wanted to originally call the X-Series Maverick Hunter X without using the Mega Man name, but Capcom said no. It's really important that people know that this is a Mega Man game. It has to have Mega Man in the title. Well, this one was almost the original title. Basically, this is a remake of Mega Man X with 3D-ish graphics and slightly remixed stages. The upgrades are all mixed around anyway. And some other new features, such as a mode where you can play as Vile. It's a pretty cool remake, definitely worth it for fans of the original. Now, Capcom would also get around to a PSP remake of the original Mega Man, but before that, there's a few other things to talk about. First up would be a metal game. Don't know what a metal game is? Well, here we go. Rockman EXE, the metal operation, was developed and published by Capcom. It was released at Japanese arcades sometime in 2006. A metal game is essentially a cross between a video game and a slot machine. You know those games where you see in some arcades where you insert a token or a coin and you try to knock the others down? Well, yeah, it's a little bit like that, just instead of a simple mechanic and luck, there's a video game screen to replace that. Metal games are fairly popular in Japanese arcades and use a lot of licensed properties, and Mega Man Battle Network was no exception to this. But the metal games never caught on outside of Japan, probably because they can't work outside of an arcade setting and they resemble gambling quite a lot more than video games. Anyway, moving on. The other random game I wanted to talk about was another Battle Network spin-off. Let's take a look. Rockman EXE Battle Chip Stadium was developed and published by Capcom and was released to Japanese arcades in the fall of 2005. Though the game was known for its almost constant updates, it did receive two major revisions, the first in the spring of 2006 and the second in the fall of 2006. Battle Chip Stadium is basically a non-canon Battle Network game that Japanese arcade players used, and it was heavily connected to the anime series Rockman EXE Beast Plus. It was constantly updated on a nearly monthly basis by Capcom, who would add more characters and chips and such, and from what I understand it was fairly popular but never made it outside of Japan due to the fact that there was never a console version and arcade games by 2006 were dead, dead, dead outside of Japan. Well, remember when I talked about the Mega Man Anniversary Collection? Yeah, that was pretty badass, but it did make me want a collection of the X games. And Capcom thankfully gave us this. Let's take a look. Mega Man X Collection was developed by Capcom Production Studio 1 and published by Capcom. It was released for the PlayStation 2 and GameCube in America on January 10, 2006. On game rankings, the GameCube version has a score of 77.50, the 18th highest of the series. I had a lot of fun with this. You get Mega Man X 1 through 6, and you can also unlock Battle and Chase. Technically, it's not an X game, but it was nice to be able to play it since the original PlayStation version didn't come out in America. Mega Man X and X2 are based off the original Super NES versions, while X3 through 6 are based on the PlayStation versions, which is really interesting for X3 since I'd play that one on Super NES, so the PlayStation version was new to me. Also, there was absolutely no problems with the button mapping on the GameCube version, for the, or the PlayStation 2 version for that matter. Great game, but this one has become sort of rare. Here's a quick story for you. A friend of mine tried to buy me this for Amazon, and it never came. After waiting and waiting, I told her to contact Amazon, and she did, and they sent another copy, which also never came. After a while, I was getting impatient because I really wanted to play it, so I told her I'd buy the game myself and to just get her money back. Some postal employee has two copies of a pretty rare GameCube game now. Thankfully, I was also able to get a copy before it became rare. Next up, Capcom would give us a PSP remake of the very first Mega Man game, much in the way they did for Mega Man X, though this one was very different. Let's take a look. Mega Man Powered Up, which in Japan has the amazingly redundant title Rockman Rockman, was developed and published by Capcom. It was released for PlayStation Portable in Japan and Asia on March 2, 2006, in America on March 14, 2006, and in Europe on March 24, 2006. On game rankings, it is an 83.10, the fourth highest of the series. If Maverick Hunter X was a straight-up remake with some new features, Powered Up takes that to the next level. This game is insane. It's a remake of the first Mega Man, only in that it remixes stage as heavily. Though you can play the old configurations, it gives the game super deformed new art style and an insane amount of content. There's two new robot masters, Oil Man and Time Man, to make it so that it has eight levels like every other Mega Man game. And you can unlock and play as all of the robot masters, as well as an alternate version of Mega Man, Proto Man, and even Roll. That total and complete whore. <laughs> anyway, this one is a mixed bag for me. I really don't like the art style and how they made Mega Man into a fucking beanie baby, but at the same time, there's a lot of content here, and you'll never be bored with this game. If you can handle the Watchmen Babies art style, it's totally worth it. Next up, well, they ended some series, so it's time to start some series up. 
First up, a new series on the DS that goes into the future past the Zero series. Here we go. Mega Man ZX, known in Japan as Rockman ZX, was developed by Inti Creates and published by Capcom. It was directed by Ryota Ito and Yoshinori Kawano and produced by Takuya Aizu, Ken Horonochi, and Kaiji Inafune. It was released for the DS in Japan on June 6, 2006, in America on September 12, 2006, in Australia on June 20, 2007, and in Europe on June 22, 2007. On game rankings, it has a score of 77.10, the 21st highest of the series. Well then, as you might be able to tell from the familiar names, the developer, and the art style, this is basically the continuation of the Zero series. It takes place in the future of the Zero series, but not as far forward as the Legends series, essentially making the timeline Classic, X, Zero, ZX, Legends. Battle Network is still its own thing. Anyway, X and Zero are back, but now they're biometals, which bond with humans to give them armor suits. Yeah, weird, but it's a pretty good game. What Capcom did with the first Zero game, and to a lesser extent the second one, was show off a bit of Metroid or Castlevania-style exploration, and this game brings that back in a major way. It's pretty much a Mega Man Metroidvania style of game, though the mapping kind of blows, so you might get lost a lot. You can choose between two characters, but it's pretty much just whether you want to play as a guy or a chick. The story remains the same either way. You gain powers called models. The X model is like X, and the ZX model is like Zero. And you gain more that will give you additional powers and abilities. It's pretty good, though it got overlooked quite a lot, I think. Next up, another DS game and another brand new series, though like ZX, it's more of a continuation. Let's take a look. Mega Man Star Force. There are three versions, Pegasus, Leo, and Dragon. And it's known in Japan as Shooting Star Rockman. It was developed and published by Capcom and directed by Masahiro Yasuma and produced by Takeshi Horonochi. It was released for the DS in Japan on December 14, 2006, in America on August 7, 2007, in Australia on November 28, 2007, and in Europe on November 30, 2007. On game rankings, the DS version has a 61.58, the fourth lowest of the series. The three versions are almost identical and were released simultaneously, though the Dragon version was exclusive to America and was only sold at GameStop and its affiliates. Essentially, this is the Battle Network series. It takes place in the same universe, just 200 years later, and is extremely similar, just everything is renamed. For instance, the internet is now called the Wave World, jacking in is phasing in, and such. The gameplay is pretty much the same, just with improved graphics and whatnot. There was even an anime series based off of it, much like NT Warrior, which was based off of Battle Network. I haven't personally played the Star Force games, but it seems that they were much less well-received than the Battle Network games. Oh well, moving on. Next up, another Battle Network spin-off mobile game that is extremely obscure. Yay! Rockman EXE Legend of Network was developed and published by Capcom and was released for mobile phones in Japan only sometime in 2006. Well, that's it. Have no info. I can imagine this is probably a sequel to Phantom of Network, and probably has nothing to do with the series in general, so let's move on to the second, and so far the last, ZX game. Mega Man ZX Advent, called Rockman ZX Advent in Japan, was developed by Inti Creates and published by Capcom. It was directed by Ryota Ito and Yujiro Hawakaya, and produced by Takuya Aizu, Takeshi Horonochi, and Kaiji Inafune. It was released for the DS in Japan on July 12, 2007, in America on October 23, 2007, in Europe on February 29, 2008, and in Australia on March 5, 2008. On game rankings, it has a 77.96, the 16th highest of the series. Well, I never actually got a hold of this one, not because I didn't want to play it, but because I just never found a copy. ZX Advent is really interesting because it's sort of not a sequel or a prequel or a remake or anything, just another ZX game that pretty much pretends the first one never happened. If I had to call it something, I guess I'd call it a reboot. There's supposedly some references to the first game, but they're further into the game and very brief. For whatever reason, ZX Advent seems to have ended the series, as there hasn't been any more ZX games or announcements. And yeah, it's been six years, though this is hardly a surprise with Capcom lately. Yeah, we're getting near the inglorious end. Let's move on. Next up is another Star Force game. Let's take a look. Mega Man Star Force 2. The versions are called Zerker Cross Saurian and Zerker Cross Ninja, and is known in Japan as Shooting Star Rockman 2, Berserk Cross Dinosaur, and Berserk Cross Ninja. It was developed and published by Capcom, directed by Masakazu Eguchi, and produced by Takeshi Horonochi. It was released for the DS in Japan on November 22, 2007, in America on June 24, 2008, and in Europe and Australia on October 31, 2008. 
The Zerker Cross Ninja version on Game Rankings has a 59.21, the second lowest of the series. Yeah, this one wasn't very well received at all, was it? Kind of makes me wonder why they elected to make a third game and not a third ZX game, but my guess is that merchandising for this one makes it worth it for Capcom. As I mentioned before, I haven't played the Star Force game, so I don't have a lot to say here, so I'm just going to move on. I've certainly been going for a long time, huh? Don't worry, we're almost done. Next up would be the return of a true legend. The original classic Mega Man series would return in pseudo 8-bit style, and it was awesome. Here's the vital stats. Mega Man 9, known in Japan as Rockman 9 Revival of Ambition, was developed by Inti Creates and Capcom and published by Capcom. It was directed by Hayato Tsuru and produced by Takura Aizu, Keiji Anafane, and Hironobu Takashida. It was released for the Wii in America on September 22, 2008, in Japan on September 24, 2008, and in Europe on September 26, 2008. The PlayStation 3 version came out in America and Europe on September 25, 2008, and in Japan on June 24, 2009. The Xbox 360 version came out in America and Europe on October 1, 2008, and in Japan on June 25, 2009. The mobile version came out in Japan only on December 1st, 2010. The Wii version on Game Rankings has a score of 84.04, the third highest of the series. What can I say? This is awesome. It returns to the NES-style graphics and gameplay, though honestly I think they went slightly too far in it, as it leaves out the slide in Mega Buster so you can't slide or charge your shots, but hell, it's a new classic Mega Man game, I'll take it. You could also get DLC to play as Proto Man, and the game had achievements. Even on the Wii, which didn't use achievements, the game had its own achievement system. This one is really a lot of fun, and it's delightfully Nintendo hard. The plot has more robot masters going nuts, though this time Dr. Wily steps forward and says he has nothing to do with it, and it's totally Dr. Light's doing. Do you believe him? Are you an ass? Of course it's Dr. Wily behind it, duh. Anyway, this game rules. Let's move on to the third, and so far the last, Star Force game. Mega Man Star Force 3, the versions are called Black Ace and Red Joker. It's known in Japan as Shooting Star Rockman 3 Black Ace and Red Joker. It was developed and published by Capcom, directed by Masahiro Yasuma, and produced by Takeshi Horonochi. It was released for the DS in Japan on November 13, 2008, and America on June 30, 2009. Europe never got this one. The Red Joker version on Game Rankings has a 64.25, the 45th highest of the series. Well, it's slightly better than the other one. Once again, I haven't played it, though from what I understand, this one was a bit of an improvement over the first two, and despite the bad critic reviews of the first two, this one was apparently the result of a fan push for a third game, so they are popular to a certain extent. This one doesn't officially end the series, like Mega Man Zero and Battle Network 6 did, but it doesn't leave a cliffhanger, at least. Yeah, let's move on. Home stretch, yo. Next up, much like the first classic game and the first X game, we got an enhanced remake, the first Battle Network game would get a remake, though oddly crossing over somehow with its sequel series from 200 years in the future. Let's take a look. Rockman EXE Operate Shooting Star was developed and published by Capcom, and was released for the DS in Japan only on November 12, 2009. Sorry to say I have almost no info on this, other than that it's an enhanced version of the first Mega Man Battle Network game for the DS. But somehow it crosses over with the Star Force games, hence the title Operate Shooting Star. So yeah, moving on. Next up, Capcom proved that Mega Man 9 was not a one-time thing and finally put to rest the fucking idiot asshole Dick Cox who claimed that X in Mega Man X is a Roman numeral for 10. Yeah, people really did say that. Here we go. Mega Man 10, known in Japan as Rockman 10 Threat from Outer Space, was developed by Indie Creates and Capcom and published by Capcom. It was directed by Ryota Ito and Hayashi Tsuru and produced by Takaya Izu, Toyohiro Serida, Kaiji Inafune, Hironobi Takashida, and Aikido Ito. Damn. It was released for the Wii in America on March 1st, 2010, in Europe on March 5th, 2010, and in Japan on March 9th, 2010. The PlayStation 3 version came out in Japan on March 9th, 2010, and in America in Europe on March 11th, 2010. The Xbox 360 version came out worldwide on March 31st, 2010. On Game Rankings, the Wii version has an 83.06, the fifth highest of the series. This one's a lot like Mega Man 9, just new levels and story, and I think the graphics are a bit better. It has a lot more color anyway. Mega Man 10 has robots getting sick somehow through a disease called Roboenza, and, uh, you know, who fucking cares? It's fucking stupid. Just shoot stuff that moves. This game also rules. This time you play as, you can play as Proto Man without DLC, though there was DLC to play as base. 
And once again, there's no slide or charge shot. Less sigh. That being said, Mega Man 10, I think, is just as good as Mega Man 9. If you ask me which of the two I prefer, the answer would change depending on what I had for lunch. Pretty much equal in my mind. Anyway, moving on. Next up is a pretty sweet release, though I passed on buying it once and have never been able to find a copy since. Go figure. Here's the vital stats. Mega Man Zero Collection, known in Japan as Rockman Zero Collection, was developed by Indie Creates and published by Capcom. It was released for the DS in America on June 8, 2010, in Japan and Australia on June 10, 2010, and in Europe on June 11, 2010. Well, finally, a Mega Man collection released outside of America. This one collects Mega Man Zero 1 through 4, but it has an odd quirk. You can select your difficulty, but it's done in a really weird way. The easy mode basically merges the four games together as one experience, while the normal mode, which is the same as the original releases, you can select independently. If you want to play, say, Mega Man Zero 3 on easy mode, you have to play through 1 and 2 first. You can't select it and then select easy mode, and conversely, you can't play through all four games in one experience on normal mode. It's kind of a weird and very specific way of going about things, but... Well, you can't complain since this is a great way to get four games for the price of one. Sadly, Zero Collection seems to have been kind of the end of an era. Capcom and several other Mega Man games that they're working on, such as two online MMOs and a third Legends game for the 3DS. One by one, they were all cancelled, and with no announcements of any sort of continuation of Star Force or ZX, and no Mega Man 11 on the horizon, it seemed that Capcom was out to gut the series and end it. This is probably linked to the creator of Mega Man, Keiji Yonafune, leaving the company and publicly airing some of their dirty laundry. He stayed on with Capcom long enough to his own discomfort to get Mega Man Legends 3 rolling, but unfortunately the only way Capcom would allow the game to be made is if there was some sort of weird gimmick. So they allowed people to get in on the development of the game by submitting ideas and designs via a website. When not enough people participated, Capcom saw it as a lack of interest and cancelled the game and every other Mega Man project. However, there is a glimmer of hope for the Blue Bomber. Yeah, he's called that sometimes. A fan-made game, done in the classic 8-bit style, wound up getting official recognition from Capcom and was even published by them. Normally, I would not include fan-made games in the Gamer's Encyclopedia, but when the owners of the property pick it up and publish it, that makes it official as far as I'm concerned. So let's take a look. Street Fighter Cross Mega Man, known in Japan as Street Fighter Cross Rock Man, was developed by Capcom, sorta, and published by Capcom Unity. It was directed by Siu Zong Hui. He's the actual creator of the game before Capcom stepped in and helped out. It was released for PC worldwide on December 18th, 2012. On game rankings, it has a score of 71, the 33rd highest of the series. Well, there was a shitty bad asshole version of Mega Man in Street Fighter Cross Tekken's stupid game for jerks, and Mega Man had appeared in some of the crossover fighting games in the past, such as Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2, which also had Roll, and 2 had Tron Bone, who also appeared in 3, and there was also a Servbot, and Zero appeared in SVC Chaos. There's a few other examples, but this is an example of the Street Fighter characters appearing in a Mega Man-style game. Essentially, this is a traditional Mega Man game. You basically could think of it as Mega Man 11, and if they ever make a real Mega Man 11, you can call it 10 and a half, I guess. You know Mega Man in base internally refers to itself as Mega Man 8 and a half? Yeah, like that. Anyway, instead of Robot Masters, you're fighting Street Fighter characters, but you still get their powers and everything. The best thing about this game? It's absolutely free to anyone who could take the trouble to go to the Capcom Unity website and hit download. It's basically a full game, like a Mega Man 9 and 10, just for free. Go get it right now. Well, that's it for the Mega Man series, and although the embargo on new games seems to continue, there is a bit of hope. After all, the Blue Bomber in all his classic glory is appearing in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and Super Smash Bros. for 3DS. You know that's going to be awesome. Masahiro Sakurai, creator and director of the Smash Bros. series, said in a recent Nintendo Direct that he won't just let any third-party character into Smash Bros. It's a playground for Nintendo characters, and although we've seen Sonic and Solid Snake, He's very hesitant about loading it up with a bunch of non-Nintendo characters. So the inclusion of a Capcom character is testament to the character's legacy and longevity, and hopefully it's the start of Capcom realizing that we want real Mega Man games, not touchscreen games. Yeah, when I originally wrote this episode, Rockman crossover was not yet a thing, and since then it's been announced to much apathy. That and Breath of Fire 6. Bunch of assholes. I should also mention something I briefly touched on. 
There are more Mega Man games out there, mostly mobile games. There are so many of them that I could never cover them all, which is why I didn't. The vast majority of mobile Mega Man games are mini-games with Mega Man stuff slapped all over them, and it's tough to find information on them since there's so many and they all came out in Japan only, so I tried to pick wisely which ones I'd talk about. Well, yeah, it's a bit of a depressing end, but there's hope for the future, and if anyone can revitalize interest in Nintendo, as the Smash Brothers series is basically designed to hold you down with a loving caress and inject pure nostalgia into your eyeballs and rectum. And we love every second of it. That being said, this ends the episode and also the first season of the Gamers Encyclopedia. Before I end the video, I wanted to talk about the series, as it's been a long, eventful journey, an odyssey from a throwaway line at the end of Clear and Confusion, where I mentioned the title of my follow-up series, down to the eventual release. Between the announcement and the inception, I went through a lot, and can honestly say I'm not the same guy I was when I first spoke about it, and believe it or not, the inception of this series is very, very different from its original conception. It went through some rather substantial upgrades. I want to say that, for all the people who waited patiently, I thank you. I honestly did seriously consider not doing this series at all. Not because of the irritation of dealing with impatient people, but because I felt there was so much hype around it that there was no way it could ever live up to it, and that no matter how good the series was, it would disappoint people. But the reaction has been really positive, so I'm happy for that. Is the series perfect? No, there's been some minor glitches along the way, but it's a learning process. It'll be a few more months before Season 2. I have another show on the way, and you'll see that fairly soon, and another season of the VMX show, and after that ends, we'll come back for Season 2. And trust me, while Clearing Confusion was always intended to end after the third series, I have everything mapped out for quite a lot of episodes for this series, so it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I'm not about to tell you guys what the second season will start with, I'll only mention that it's a series that I don't even like. Yeah, I'm doing that. See you then.